George Landis and this is the Landis Performance Channel. This is the next car we're doing. It's a 68 Camaro. And if you saw our fuel pump video, you would have seen me install the fuel pump and sending unit into the stainless gas tank for this car. We're gonna do a Terminator throttle body fuel injection setup on it and get the car back running. We're gonna have to probably do brake fluid, change, and some of the lubricants, uh, a master cylinder, and definitely tires since they're about 10 years old. The uh, last registration on the car was uh, 2014, so it's been sitting for a while. Okay, here's the engine bay. You see basic issue, small block Chevy, carbureted. It's got air conditioning uh, kit installed on the car. It's gonna look real nice with the Terminator throttle body in there. Won't be able to tell the difference. So this system is the Holly Terminator system we're installing in this vehicle. You have your throttle body, which has four injectors built in, two on each side. A single inlet line, that's the reason why we're using a return in the tank. We only need a single line feeding this, this throttle body. Harnesses that come with the kit, your main harness, battery harness, which has to be connected to the battery. The battery will work as a basically a heat sink or a electrical sink. So any kind of voltage spikes in the system, the battery will absorb and it won't interfere with the ECU. You got your ECU. There it is. Three and a half inch touchscreen, which you can monitor all the sensors. Plus you can do tuning on this. All your paperwork. Stylus for this for the three and a half screen and all your parts for the, your install your gasket water temp sender you've got linkage uh, carburetor studs and Holly also comes with this neat piece that goes on the exhaust you can drill a hole in it and this will seal the exhaust for the O2 sensor we're going to go ahead and weld our O2 sensor in and it comes with a bracket for a cable setup, but this car has a solid rod, so we won't be using that. On this harness, you've got a couple different connections here. You got four input outputs. You got your ECU, fuel pressure, ignition. This hooks to the throttle body, your CAN bus, and then the flying wires. Now we'll explain those in a little while. Okay, so the first thing we want to do when we start the wiring schematics is we want to pull out the instructions. I know a lot of people don't think that, but that's the modern thing. You have to do that now. So obviously you can see in the instructions, they clearly state that the main battery connect harness has to go to the battery to keep you from voiding your warranty. And the reason being any voltage flashback can go in, put a voltage surge into the ECU and fry the ECU. So it's good for your warranty and it's also good so you don't have a problem. The next thing is the actual Terminator Stealth instruction manual. And it has the correct way to hook up your fuel system, the components that come in the kit. There's the exhaust piece we were talking about and there's the wiring schematic of the system. And this is what we're gonna use now for putting it in. Now you'll see this harness has what they call a flying lead coming out of it. And these wires, if you look on this, on the instructions, you have a, a red that gets connected directly to the battery, a black that gets chassis ground, the green feeds your fuel pump, and the white and yellow are parts of the ignition system depending on which type you use, whether it's fuel only or computer controlled timing. So that's the overall instructions there. So now what I do for my installations, these harnesses come pre-made as a kit. So it's not made for any particular vehicle. It's made so it fits in all vehicles. Now I like to have my 
systems look like it was professionally installed. So what I will do is I will untake, I'll take this covering off and I'll run these wires back to where they make sense for my installation. So our red wire and our black wire, since they need to be grounded, I will pull those all the way back to the header panel and then add them into the battery harness going to the back, back to the battery. It makes it clean, one harness going to the battery, all the wires are in there. The fuel pump wire, that's gonna go to the back of the car. So I will come back here to the relay and I will bre break it out here and then run that to the back of the car. It gives me a little extra harness and that way I, I make the run as short as possible going back to the fuel pump. And then the, red, the uh, yellow and white will just depend on what we're using for the ignition system. Okay, so on this particular vehicle, going through the instructions, we have multiple ignition configurations. On our vehicle, we have a MSD distributor with a 6A box. So we're gonna leave it mechanically controlling timing and the, and the terminator will control fuel. So in this system, we have a yellow black wire that's gonna to connect to the ignition harness that is right here. Our yellow and white are not used. So I will now pull those all the way back to the header and cut them in the harness and then recover this harness. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started and then we'll be ready to install the harness into the vehicle. Okay, so now we've modified this harness. Hopefully it wasn't uh, too fast of a process in the video. If you have questions on what I did, please leave them in the comments. So one thing we did was we added fourth wire for our input output. Now we have an input and three outputs. And when I added that in, all I have to do is simply push this connector in pull out the appropriate pin position. They have these pins in them, these plugs. And that's what seals the terminal. And when you're done, you take the double side, push it down and it's locked. If it won't go in, Check your terminals, one of them's probably not in completely. So to do, add that wire to there, we had to use one of these connectors, especially for the header. It's a uh, amp, super series 1.5, and a Holly crimper, part number 567-100. And now to finish this end, we're gonna use the Holly crimper 567-102. And we're gonna remove this con connector and put this one on. And even though this is an eight position, now we have we can add more inputs and outputs later if we like to. And this is the appropriate connector to will connect to the vehicle. All these tools you're gonna need if you want to modify wiring harnesses. You need some type of pin removal tool, a pair of good strippers. And then a couple of these different, connect, different tools. Now these three are factory Delphi tools. This one is Delphi tool also, but that's the one from Holly. And this is the amp tool from Holly. And this is a, a universal that you can use for most connectors. You just have to re be very careful that when you crimp the terminal, you get a good bite on the, on the wire and you're not gonna have a wiring issue. If you make bad crimps, you're gonna have terrible time with issues with the drivability and such, and it will all lead back to wiring. So you wanna make sure that's done right. 
I'm gonna take one of these apart. We're gonna use a screwdriver. Take the retainer off. And in this connector, there's a place to go in with the tool to release the wire. Put it in, wiggle it around a little bit, and the wire comes right out. The wire has a little, the wire has a little tab there, that's what locks the wire in. It's when we push the tool in, that's what pushes it down and releases the wire. After they've been pushed down, you gotta come in and bend it back out a little bit so it, it bites again. So now we're gonna add this wire in. We wanna crimp it to the same length. Another tidbit that I couldn't talk about when I was doing the, uh, moving the wiring around. When you're using electrical tape, if you snap it to, to break it apart, that's when you see down the road, you see the electrical tape unraveling. If you cut it and leave about two to three inches and put it on without stretching the wire, it'll stay connected much longer and make a better connection. So we already have our seal on this wire. Put it on the, use the appropriate crimper. Make sure the wire's all the way in. Now the thing with these crimpers, they're ratcheting and they're self loading. When you're all the way squeezed, you can't make it any tighter than what it, it goes on. Crimp the seal. And that's what it looks like when it's properly crimped. Okay, so now we want to put it into the connector and we want to make sure the wires match up. So it's going to be really hard to see, but on these there's little letters there to tell what, which ones are which. Okay, like I said, these are really hard to see. So that's A, B, C, and D, E, F, G, and H. So our white with black wire is in C. So we find C right there and push the wire in. You want to make sure that where that little notch is is where the little tab is on the wire when you put it in. It has to be in the right orientation. So now we know where that wire is, we can just add the other wires in. Green is on the outside. Gray. And we can put the safety stop on it. This pushes the contacts in and makes sure the wires don't get, can't be pulled out if they're crimped properly. And that's it. So now this harness is ready to install in the car. We have our power, our ground, our fuel pump, and our ignition turn on, red white tracer, all at the, at the ECU now where it makes more sense for this installation. Everything else is gonna be mounted under the hood. So we're gonna mount it in the car and we'll show that. This is the tool that we use to do the hole punch made by Eastwood. You drill a half inch hole and you go through. You can see it puts a neural in the wall. When it tightens up, it pops the metal through. So here's where we chose to put the hole through the firewall. You can see there are two inch hole punch mounted in the firewall. 
that's going to make a perfect hole for the grommet. And there's the hole with the grommet in it. And run the harness through there and reinstall the grommet. All right, so this engine originally had a Holley carburetor on it. And the Holley carburetors are very good, but obviously this one was not tuned. Here is the spark plugs that came out of this thing, and they are pretty bad. So with our fuel injection system, we're gonna get great cold starts. We're gonna get smooth idle, whether the AC is on or off. We're gonna get good AFR readings, air fuel ratio readings, because the fuel injection system has a wide banding sensor in the exhaust. It monitors how much unburned oxygen is in the pipe relays that information back to the ECU and then the ECU makes adjustments to make sure that the air fuel ratio is correct at all times. It has learning so in any kind of steady state the fuel injection will, will learn what it needs to do to correct the numbers that are in the tune. Now acceleration enrichment and cold start those have to be tuned manually. So we'll take this carburetor off and we'll put our fuel injection system on. Okay, we have the Camaro up on the lift and we've started installing the fuel tank. Now to see the installation of the fuel pump into the tank, watch this previous video. In that video, we show different fuel pumps and fuel tanks for different EFI installations and in vehicles that were not equipped with fuel injection from the factory. So to complete this installation, this is the factory fuel gauge wire. We're gonna extend that and send it across the top of the tank and come out up here. This harness here is the harness that comes from Holly, and you can see the, the wires there, the purple is the fuel tank sending unit and the black next to it is the ground for the fuel sending unit. The gray is to the fuel pump and the black beside that is the ground for the fuel pump. So those we're gonna be connecting, the black, will, both blacks will be going to the chassis ground. The purple will be connecting to the tan wire that we're gonna send across the top of the tank and the gray will be connected to the fuel pump wire and the Holly EFI harness. Now we're gonna go ahead and shorten this harness because you can see it's pretty long so we'll go ahead and make the connection up here all right so as you would see in the other video this is a non-return fuel pump it has a return system and regulator built into the tank so this is our line that's coming out of the tank and the reason we like using this as you can see there's a small section of rubber hose connecting to the factory 3 8 line going to the front of the car for hose we use the Earl's Vapor Guard fuel injection hose. Very good hose. You don't have to worry about this with the pressure or with ethanol content in the fuel. This hose will handle everything. There's the Terminator throttle body installed on the vehicle. We moved a couple of the lines around. There's our temp sensor, fuel filter, and inlet line. So now we're ready to go ahead and start the vehicle and tune it. So look for part two of this video and we'll show the uh, installation tuning wise and all the uh, accessories that we have to do to complete the, the vehicle.